Wow, thank you, Larry. Man, that was great. God's amazing God. I'm glad I'm his child, aren't you? I'm glad I'm saved. All right. Father, we love you. Thank you for the message, God, you laid on my heart this week. You laid this message on my heart, God, and I've asked you this morning for the words. And uh, I've worked on it and prayed over it and meditated on it. And God, I, I know, Lord, it'll bring honor and glory to you. I hope people will be receptive to it. And God, I thank you for this morning, the Holy Spirit we feel here. And Lord, I want you to bind the powers of evil. You got more power than anybody. You, you, you defeated them, Jesus, on the cross. And I know they show up everywhere. And uh, God, I pray you bind the power. Open the eyes of the hearts of these people this morning, God. Open the eyes of the hearts of everyone here. And God, may they listen to what thus saith the Lord, your word. And I will praise you for it. I'll give you glory for it, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a little different this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand with your Bibles. A little different. I like to do different, and then we'll get into it. I'm going to talk about today, America declared war on God. I uh, really looked at this and, and thought about it and researched it, and uh, I'm convinced that America has declared war on God. Whether you do or not, doesn't matter. I hope you do. If you don't, if you don't they ain't going to change my mind. I still believe we have declared war on God for what we are doing and allowing to happen in our country. So God spoke to me. Now I'm going to speak to you. All right, in the book of uh, Corinthians, a wonderful passage of Scripture, chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I, I have preached from this before, but never this sermon. First time I've ever preached this sermon. It's a new one, and I like to... Listen to the Lord, and I'll, I'll get to the scripture. On, I'll show it to you on the screen just in a moment. And we're going to go through the verses, but I want to talk about it. It's a spiritual warfare, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood. It's not where the battle's at. But when you, when you look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, probably through, I got it down 3 through 6, but I'm going to look at 3 through 5, these three verses. Look at it with me. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are carnal, or not carnal, I'm sorry, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So I did go through six. I thought because really it shouldn't have stopped. It didn't stop at five because we have a semicolon there, and yet we go through verse number six because the period's there, which all is together. Put your scripture together so it's all together there. Now, all right, thank you. you may be seated. Uh the introduction is this. I put this on the screen because I researched it. In 1973, the timeline, if you look up the timeline, and I do look up timelines and what goes on, and in 1973, Supreme Court legalized abortion. Y'all remember that? In 44 years, I want you to look at the number of abortions in America that has been performed. Since 1973. 59,115,995 babies have been killed. What do you think about that? Is God pleased with that? Isn't that a horrible tragedy? That men and women that sat on the Supreme Court bench made that a law? Roe versus Wade? They have declared war on God. Isn't that murder? Amen. 
And so I want to contrast that to something. We think about the Holocaust. You know, there's a lot of people killed about that. A lot of the Jews were killed. So I looked it up. I wanted to see how many were killed in the Holocaust. So I got that on the board. Six million Jews. You take six from 59, that's 53, that, that still leaves 53 million, 115,995 babies being killed. And we talk about God blessing America? We did. You said, preacher, we didn't do that. I hope you didn't vote for nobody that did that. I hope we didn't elect those people there. I would never vote for anybody that does that, that believes in abortion. 59 million babies have been killed. Broke my heart. I'm, I thought 6 million Jews was a lot. That's nothing compared to these babies that have been killed. Still going on today. The warfare is in our flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, it says, For they walk in the flesh, though we live in the flesh, though we behave in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The war is not with the, with the Republicans and the Democrats. It's, it's not with the, those folks. It's not with Hollywood. It's with the devil. These are just people that he uses. And this war is raging in America today. And I don't see too many Christians are even alarmed about it. I see so little Christians that it's this way of life anymore. <sighs> what a warfare. Spiritual warfare. It's not a physical warfare. We don't war after the flesh. We're not fighting one another. We're fighting, but not one another. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For, look at it. For we wrestle not, or we fight not against flesh and blood. I told you it wasn't begin against the Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and all that. That's not who it's against. But against principalities. So that spells me it's a spiritual warfare, correct? This is a spiritual battle that's going on. Against powers. And that's supernatural powers. I can't understand anybody that doesn't believe in demonic possession. I don't understand that. I don't know what their answer is, but there are principalities that are present all around us. I know that we all have an angel. I believe that God assigns an angel to it. But also, he didn't assign a demon, but there is one that bothers me every day. You got one? He don't bother you every day? Well, I, I do. Well, I'm going to send him over to you then. If you don't have one, I'll be glad to send him there. He's real. It's, it goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, the war is right here. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you, right here is where the war is fought in your mind. It's not a spirit, it's a spiritual battle against the rulers of darkness. Those are demonic spirits of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is our enemy and the only way. You see, it's your mind. And we've got to understand how we're going to deal with this war. How we're going to fight this war. Not flesh and blood. It's not flesh and blood. It's not that. We're going to talk about the weakness of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. It says this, but I, this I say, walk, walk, behave, live in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we do that, that's the antidote for it. The weakness of the flesh. You, you know, now the Catholic monks, they, they believe in monasteries. If you've ever seen monasteries, they have monasteries. You know what the Catholic monks do. So they decided that here's what we can do. We can separate ourselves from society, and we can go and live in a monastery, and we'll be all right. We'll be fine. We won't be bothered there. I remember being in Jericho one time, and I looked up on the side of the mountain. Phew, I mean, a big, huge mountain. On the side of this mountain, they had monasteries. 
and those monks would come and get their food, put them on donkeys, and carry it up to them. And they lived up there, and they're all right. That's, I think you think the devil won't bother them up there. I don't care where you go in a monastery, you can't get away from evil. Amen. You can't get away from it. You can't, leave, you can't run from it. <laughs> Reminds me of this one guy that went to a monastery, this guy. And, uh, you know, it was a type of monastery that you could only say two words a year. That's all you could do. So the first year, he goes in and they ask him, so, okay, you got two words? What, what, what are you going to say? He said, bed hard. Okay. He goes back. Another year, he comes back and said, all right, you got two words. He said, what are you going to say? Food bad. All right. You go back and you come back in a year. He comes back the third year. And he said, you got two words. He said, what? I quit. I quit. And he said, you might as well. He said, you ain't done nothing but client complain for three years. You cannot get away. I don't care where you go. The devil's going to be there, right? You think the devil don't bother those monks up there in Jericho on top of that mountain? Of course he does. He's everywhere. This is the battle, right? It's a spiritual, spiritual battle. Now, Proverbs 23 and 7. I don't think I have this one on the, on the screen, but I'm going to quote it to you. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I think in my heart, and as you think in your heart, so are you, right? So it's the thinking. It's the thinking. It's, it, it deals with the mind. Walk in the Spirit, fulfill in the Spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, we've got, the devil's got powerful attractions today, and of course he uses TV probably as, about as much as anything to distract people. And, I, and, I, and you know... Uh, I was reading about our youth, and you better make sure what you, your kids listen to. And this was a, this was a survey that was made where that uh, the youth were listening to uh, between the age, between grade 7 and 12. They listened to 10,500 time, uh, 500 times of rock music. A lot of kids do. From, from the 7th to the 12th, 10,500 hours of rock music. I think that'll mess you up. I don't like rock music. It's not good. It's not good for our children. You see, preacher, I'm not saying that done said it. And I believe it. ACDC, one of the guys just died. ACDC, he just died. And he wrote the, uh, wrote the song, Highway to Hell. And I want to tell you, this is what, music is what's de destroying a lot of our youth today. And one of the other things that I have, and we all have them, this right here, is one of the most dangerous things you can have and give to a kid without monitoring it. You better monitor this with your kid. Because once they start in porn and go to there and then begin to see it, then it'll destroy their lives. You better monitor it. Right? This is a good thing. I, 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 I've never seen porn. Won't look at porn. But I, I, do, I use this in a gracious way because there's all kinds of Bible programs on there. But you've got to be careful, right? You've got to be careful with your kids. Your iPad's got an iPad. I listen to preaching all the time. I sit and watch a football game listen to preaching. I just close it out. I, I mean, you can use these things for God's glory. But they can also be used in a very horrible way. One of the most th things that has bothered me about the weakness of the flesh, we, we, we're talking about the weakness of the flesh now, and it is weak. My flesh is weak and sore. I, you know what bothers me might not bother you, but the devil knows you. He knows your weakness. He knows how to tempt you. He knows how to get to you, and he knows how to get to me. And boy, he'll explode it, won't he? Oh, yeah. yeah, you see, it all begins right here. And this, this alarmed me. This is really, and I hope there's not a man in here that does this. If you are, please, please, let me encourage you to quit today. 68% of the men in our churches are addicted to pornography. Christian members of our churches, 68% look at it on a regular basis. 
That just came out. I said, I can't believe that. Oh, that don't bother me. I can look at that. That's not just pictures. Oh, man, you mean to tell me that you could look at some... And listen, some of the women are involved in this. Some of our youth are involved in this. They're involved in it. Just, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're at. Boy, I hope, now, now, if you're into that, let me say to you, one of the members of my church was into that, our pastor, lost his family of two children, lost his marriage. You can't tell me that you watch porn and it don't affect you and the lust will bubble up inside of you with testosterone and all that. Don't tell me that. I wasn't born yesterday. I know all about it. This is where we're at. When 68% of our Christian men, God help us. Mm. You, you know why God destroyed the first world? Genesis chapter 6, because their thoughts were continually, it goes back to the thinking, right? The battle's here. It goes back to right here. Because their thoughts were continuously evil on God. And God just wiped them out. Amen. And we're getting there, right? We're getting there. God help us. Got to watch that transcendental meditation and yoga. I keep up, I keep up everything. I watch these. Uh, I got this lady that uh, really got saved. She was a, an ex-witch, and I listened to her testimony, and she, she's got a program called On the Other Side of Darkness. Don't get involved in yoga. Don't get involved in transcendental meditation. I'll tell you what kind of meditation to get in on is God's holy word. Now, you can do that, but stay off the other. And it's kind of like you say, well, what's going to happen if I yoga and I'm having this little meditation in yoga and I have this little meditation, transcendental meditation? I'll tell you what, you just opened up yourself to demonic possession because that demon can come right in through that stuff. And you got all kinds of problems there. Let me ask you something. You say, well, you know, I'm not sure about that. Okay, tonight, let me ask you this. Unlock your windows, open them up, open your front doors, back doors, side doors, whatever doors you got, garage door, go to sleep. Will you do that? Will you do that? No, you ain't going to do that. Why? Because I'm afraid what come in. Yeah. When you open up yourself to these things, I'm guarantee you, brother, there's going to be somebody come in, right? And it's going to be demons. And you say, what? Right. So, we're there. Because I went a few years ago, I can't remember, it's probably been sometime around 2005 or 6. I went to, we went to Washington to prayer walk. I probably walked ever around every place up there. White House, Senate, Congress, and one of the most things I did with the Supreme Court, I went to the steps of the Supreme Court, climbed up on them steps, stood up there, looked in where those men and women have made all these laws. And I prayed for that crowd. Didn't do a bit of good. So, n another thing that this is, in June 25th, 1962, even before the abortion babies, the U.S. Supreme Court first ruled that government endorsed prayer in public schools was un unconstitutional. For 55 years, they stopped that. What do you think about that? For 55 years, when I was going to school, the teacher could lead us in prayer. When I was going to school, the teacher could read the Bible to us. When I was going to school, we gave a pledge to so that, that flag right now. We have declared war on God. Amen. Now, we always talk about, well, what about the killing in the schools? We kick God out of the schools. We kick God out. What do you expect? When you kick God out, there's no God there. This is where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Are you hearing me? This is where we're at. This is where we're at. We've kicked him out. 1973, another thing happened. 
Prior to that, the, the Psychological Association declared that homosexuality was a mental illness. In 1973, the Supreme Court said it's not. It's an alternative lifestyle. And now we've gone from that to transcend gender. If you don't like being a boy, turn yourself into a girl. You don't like being a girl, turn yourself into a boy. Ain't that where we're at? Is God pleased with this? Do you think God's up there clapping and saying, Hooray! We declared war on God. This is where we're at. You said, are you angry? No, I'm just telling you. This is where we're at. Well, I'm going to come to a point of what I want you to do. I'm not saying you're guilty. But somebody is. The world, I hope we're not guilty of putting people in office like that. But that's where we're at. And it breaks my heart. And then June of 26, 2015, you know what the Supreme Court did? Legalized same, same, uh, same sex marriage. Now, do you hate them? No, we love them. But we got to tell the truth, right? I got them live over next to me. I speak to them. Sure, I do. Of course. But I tell them the truth. The truth. The truth. The truth. America has declared God war on God. I studied the history of Israel. You study the Northern King, you study the Southern Kingdom, and once they turned their back on God and declared war on God, what did God do to Israel? He sent the enemy in. The enemy is among us. Wasn't that what you're saying, Donnie? You know? About, you know, or somebody said it, maybe it's JD, somebody, talked about the fact that you would never thought, I guess it was JD, talked about somebody would ever come into a church and shoot people. In 1980, when I moved uh, to Asheville uh, to pastor there, uh, the Assembly of God Church across the street, just a couple of streets over from where I was pastor, uh, one day was preaching on Sunday morning. I mean, this was 1980. And this guy come in, walked down the aisle on the second bench where Ollie and uh, Nature was sitting be, be about on the second bench. He goes over and his wife was over there and he shoots and kills his wife and the preacher comes down to try to talk to him or help him and he kills him. And that's 1980. Is it beyond the rim of reality that one could come in that door and shoot me? It could happen. Amen. You see, the enemy is among us. The wars are different, changed. We're at war, but it's not. Yeah, we're in war in Afghanistan. We're at war here and there and different things. But I'm going to tell you, the war is in America right now. Amen. We've let people in here without being vented, vent, vented or whatever you want to call it, and we've let them come in, and, and I'm for it. I think if you come legally, I love everybody, red and yellow, black and white. It don't make no difference to me. God made us all. We all are somebody. All of us. And I love everybody. I got friends everywhere. I got dear friends of all nationalities and all ethics. They, that, 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 I want them to come. That's fine. But may they come legally. Right? You hear me? This is what I believe. This is what I, I believe. We got problems, right? Well, who's going to? I don't care. I mean, I could die right now. If you were to shoot me, I'd just go home to be with God. I've got grandchildren here, and I've got my, I got my son here, and I've got grandchildren in North Carolina. Man, what, what are they going to have to grow up in? We declared war on God. It's bad, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you know I'm telling the truth. It's bad. God said, tell them. Stay away from fortune telling. Stay away from channeling. Fortune telling, channeling, all that stuff, that is of the devil. All right, last of all. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts us against the spirit. And it's a battle that goes on all the day. The lust against the spirit, the Holy Spirit, that's your nature. And the spirit against the flesh. My spirit says, do this, do that. My flesh says, no, let's do this. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. We're right caught in the middle of it. We're caught right in the middle of it, where that this battle is raging so graciously. We're caught right in the middle. 
Now look, let me give you a verse right here that really t tells it. Romans 7, 23, great verse. I've loved it and I've quoted it many times. But I see another law in my members. Now here's a law, principle. It's in my members. And this, this law in my members, it's, 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 uh, we've, we've got uh, the five senses, and that's how this law works. It is the law of sin. It's what it is. It's the law of sin that works through the members, works through your eyes, what you see. That's why. And even now, we've got cosmetology. Uh, these magazines are now putting pornography in them for our kids, right? Did you, are, you, are you familiar with that? It's happening. They're doing that now. It's happening. You can buy it at Walmart, anywhere else. You can buy it. That's where they're going. The devil's slipping it in on us, ladies and gentlemen. But nobody takes an issue with it. Joel Osteen and these big guys that's got the platform ought to take an issue against that. He got 15,000, 20,000 people. He ought to tell them that this is wrong. Oh, no. He ain't hurt nobody. You don't want to offend them, right? Well, I just got a small platform here, but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I'm going to stay here until you want me to go somewhere else, and then I'll still tell it somewhere else because I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to preach the truth. I, want my, I preach it to my family. I, they, I'm talking to you guys just as well as I'm talking to anybody. I ain't talking to just somebody. I'm just talking to me. I had to get this before I could deliver it. You say, well, I don't like that kind of preaching. Well, uh, Tell the deacons, and they can come to me and say, Preacher, they don't like your kind of preaching. Well, bless God. I'd write that door shouting hallelujah because I'm going to preach the word. And I'm just trying to warn us. I'm not saying we're guilty. I hope we're not. If we are, let's get it right. But if we are not, that's good. But we, Okay, what, what do you want me to do, Preacher? Well, Here's this war against the law of my mind. Here's this, all in the mind, and brings me into captivity. So this law of my mind brings me into captivity of the law of sin and death, which is in my members. And so the law of my mind is the law of God. God, God, let me say this. I'm going to say three things. First of all, God communicates to us through the mind. There's no, I don't have a vision. I don't have, you know, I've, I've never had a vision, uh, none whatsoever. I, I've never... Uh, you know, had a dream like that. God communicates to me through my mind. And he, 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 I don't get inspiration because, you see, God gave inspiration to these writers. We have 40 different writers of this Bible, 40 of them, 40 different writers. And inspiration was God breathed upon them, and they wrote the Bible, and I have it recorded. Okay, I don't have inspiration, but I have illumination. God has given me illumination. And illumination is to light this Bible up, to reveal this Bible to me. God reveals this Bible to me, and he does it through my mind. He reveals these biblical truths to me. And then I am to preach these biblical truths to you. And that's the way God speaks to me. He speaks to me through my mind. And he illuminates this passage of Scripture. And then illumination also will give me interpretation that I can interpret it right. So it's the law of my mind, and bring me into captivity the law of sin, of which is in my members. So you've got this law of the mind, which is God. That's how God communicates to us. You've got this law of the members. That's the flesh. That's the lust of the eye, pride of life, and, and, and you know, all that, that stuff. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And then I've got these five members that can control me if I allow it. But the law of my mind is where God works. God communicates to me through my mind. I've got to listen to God through my mind. Okay? Do you get that? Through your mind. It, it, the battle's up there. Psalms 119. Here's a good one. Remember this. Remember this. I hope you do this. Thy word have I hid where? Who are you hiding it from? Who are you hiding it from? It's hid. You're not hiding it from God. You're hiding it from the devil. There's times when you're tempted, when the devil will tempt you, and he does me daily. And therefore, I, I said, oh, I got a word for that. And when you study the life of Jesus, the one thing that Jesus always did was he quoted Scripture to the devil. He didn't dialogue with him. Sometimes I'm, I tell him where to go. And I ain't going to tell you where that's at. But I want to tell you, I tell him where to go. Because he constantly harasses me, and yet I know 
that, that, that is, is, is this power. So I've hid thy word in my heart. And the reason I hid it in my heart, I know the word. I, 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 I meditate on the word. I memorize the word. And then when he comes to me, I can quote scripture that I might not sin against God. When the devil puts that in my heart, I say, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. No, no, no. I got a word for that. I got a word for that. See, learn that. Hide the word in your heart that you will not sin against God. All right, weapons of our flesh. Here, here, here's what I want to talk about. The weapons for our flesh. It says in verse number four, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not uh, secular. They're not something you can see. But we do have weapons, right? Okay, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. These, these weapons that we have, they can pull down this citadel. The citadel of power of Satan. So the weapons that I have and you have can pull it down and can destroy those strongholds. Addiction, like addiction to porn. You, could, you know, God can tear that down. God can destroy that. Addiction to anything else, whatever kind of addiction you have, you know, he'll do that. Now let me tell you one thing. You see what, what the world is saying. The learn real uh, uh, intellectual community says, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, education can, uh, it, it can control your mind. No, education can't control your mind. I remember what Dr. Stanley said one time. You know, Dr. Rogers, he said, this one man, you know, talked to him about, said, well, you know, said when I was, uh, I was a drunkard and said, uh, uh, I, went to, uh, I went to AA and all those places and said, uh, uh, I just become an educated drunk. Then they said I was an educated alcoholic. And he said, the only thing that really took it away from me was God. And Jesus Christ. Education is all right, but it will not clear and control your mind. I mean, you can take a person that's real mean and educated, and they're just an educated criminal. You know, that's not the answer. Well, they say, oh, well, legislation can do it. Okay, uh, news flash. In the morning, they're going to pass a law in Washington, D.C., and the Congress and Senate are going to pass that you can't think in your mind about murder you can't think it's against the law to think about murder it's against the law to think about abortion it's against the law to lie it, to think about it can legislation control your mind you can't legislate it no it won't work oh and you said well i know what's good an environment will do it oh if i just change environments right you just get this person out of this environment put him in this environment and it'll control his mind right Ladies and gentlemen, where was Adam and Eve when they sinned? Can you get any better environment than the Garden of Eden? Environment's not going to change anything. It takes God's Word. That's what changes it. Not education. Not legislation. Nor is it the environment going to change. It's not going to do it. All right? God communicates through my mind. But God changes... What God does, God changes us through changing our mind, right? God changes me through changing my mind. Can God change my mind? Amen. Absolutely. And he does. He changes my mind. I look at something, I say, I think that's right. God says, no, it's not right. He changes my mind, and it changes me. Okay, thirdly, God controls me. God controls me through my mind. That's how he does it. It's the law of my mind. It's the law of your mind. That's how he does it. And then verse 5, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Hmm. Well, he can do that. That's how God destroyed the world. First time was imaginations evil before God. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and brings into captivity every thought. There it is again. There's the mind. Thought. To the obedience of Christ. There it is. It's all in the mind. Got to get it right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's the weapon. First weapon. Three of them. Very quickly. We have to read God's Word. The other day I heard somebody say, and I can't remember whether it was uh, Dr. Stanley. I listen to him a lot. And, and uh, Dr. Rogers and Tony Evans and those I listen to a lot, a lot of preachers. And he said this. He said, if you don't read the Bible, you don't even know how to pray. He said, if you don't read the Bible, you really don't even know how to pray. 
What do you think of that? I didn't say it, but I'm just speaking. Do you, do you think that's right? If you don't, well, you say I can't, you don't have time to read or I can't see to read or anything like that. Could be that. Uh, but you can get a tape and listen to it. You can get a DVD and listen to the, to the Word of God. There's always ways of getting the Word of God into it. We need to put the Word of God into us every day. Every day. That's a weapon. Whether you read it or whether you listen to it, whether you get it into you, you've got to put it inside you every day. Because 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. When you study the Word and you read the Word of God, you are God approves that, right? God gives you a check mark, right? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read the Word. That's a weapon. It's mighty, powerful through God. Rightly, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Make sure you get it right when you teach it. Make sure you get it right when you preach it. That's the first one. There's another one. We are to receive God's word, Luke 8, 15, but, but, that, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit with patience. This is, a, this is when you go into Luke chapter, chapter 8, verse 5 through 15, you'll find the parable that Jesus gave, the seed sower, goes out and sows the seed. Some seed fell, uh, you know, I think it was uh, by the wayside. And the devil came, and the bird represents the devil. The devil came and took the seed away. I'm sowing seed right now. I'm sowing seed right now, okay? And the devil come and take us away. You see, uh, sometimes people just endure worship service. <laughs> you know, those church members just come to endure it. <laughs> they just go, well, if I can endure that, I'll be all right. need to listen. We need to listen to God's Word. We don't need to endure God's Word. We need to enjoy God's Word. Amen? But I see some, some church members, I just endured that one. Bless God, I'll be back next Sunday, and I'll endure it again. <laughs> oh, God help us. I hope ain't nothing like that here. Not just endure it, but to enjoy it and let it feed us. Fell by the wayside. The other one fell on a rock. It fell on a rock, but, you know, that seed just fell on a rock. It didn't do no good because it had no moisture. Couldn't do nothing. It couldn't grow. Had no root. What was the other one? Well, there's another one. And, and, and it uh, fell among thorns. Thorns choked it out. Cares of the world. You can preach the word of God. People sit and listen to it. Don't even bother them a bit. <laughs> and the thorns just choked the word out. Cares of this life. And then it fell on good ground. But when it fell on good ground, let me tell you something. It brought forth fruit. Fruit. And that's what we're supposed to be producing, right? It's fruit. I ain't through yet. We ought to receive God's word. We ought to resist Satan's word. This is the last weapon. Great weapon. We're to read. We're to receive, and we are to reject, right? Not God's word, but Satan's word. Listen to James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee. He'll talk to you, right? He talked to Eve, messed her up. He's talked to me and messed me up sometimes. Has he ever messed you up? <laughs> yeah, he'll mess you up. Reject that. Resist means I'm not going to go there, devil. It's kind of like if I were, if the police were to come and get me after all and said, you're under arrest. I said, I resist you. That means they have to drag me out of here, right? And he probably would. I don't know. But this is, a, this is a metaphor. It's a picture of when the devil comes. Resist him. Resist him. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to think that. You're not going to get me to think in that way. I'm not going to do it. What it says, what he'll do when you keep resisting. He flee. He's gone. He's gone. Hey, man, are you gonna have a fight with me? I'm telling you, I'm gonna fight him. Because I got Jesus on my side. And so have you. Now, all right, Earl, get us a song, if you would, please. Just leave it on, guys. Leave the thing up there. I mean, I got something I want to do. Stand with me. 
So the three weapons, read the word, receive the word. They're powerful, right? Reading this Bible is the most wonderful thing that we can do. Receiving the word, studying the word, into it, put it into our hearts and lives is the most wonderful thing we can do. Resist the devil, resist his words, and we'll, that's a great weapon. Now, what are we going to do about this situation? God declared, I mean, you know, we declared war on, war on God, but we haven't here. We haven't. I know we haven't. But then people outside your house, what are we going to do? How are we going to make it? it? It's affecting us, the way we live, the way we worship. It's affecting us. It affects our children. What are we going to do about it? What can we do? We can read this book more. We can study it more. And we can resist the devil more. But there's a prayer. There's a prayer that we can do. And uh, I'm going to uh, look at it. Look at this prayer. I will answer God's call to follow my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so he might forgive my sin and heal my land. Are you familiar with 2 Chronicles seven fourteen? You Bible readers? You're familiar with that, right? Wouldn't that solve a lot of our problems? Amen. If all of us... You know what? Uh, Nehemiah was in captivity by the uh, Medes and the Persians, and, and he, he went to pray, and he prayed for the sins of his people, his fathers, the sins of his fathers, the sins of his children, and all that. We probably need to pray for the sins of our people, too. Our American, our leaders up there, I mean, they're, they're just destroying us. I'm telling you, it's bad. And, and, and it ain't going to get no better until we do something about it. And that's when we fall on our days. I'm going to ask you to pray that prayer. I don't know your heart. I don't know what's in your heart, but I've done, I, I, I'm going to pray it too. I'm going to pray it right here. I'm going to, I will answer God's call and fall on my knees in humility. Okay. Some of you can't get on your knees. I understand that. Some of you can't. Some of you can. Some of you can sit. Some of you can stand. It don't matter, matter to me. But I'm going to ask you that our nation has declared war on God. And we need to combat that, ladies and gentlemen. We need to do what we can do. Just this little church right here. Just right here. It can change the course Amen. of this church. But we're going to have to do that. I want to. If there's anything in your life that I've talked about here. And you're dilly dabbling in any of these things. In the... In any of it, get it right. God loves you. And God, we need help. We need God's people to be on fire for Christ. And we need some, some of God's preachers on fire for Christ, too. I want to be one of those. I'm not a popular preacher, but that doesn't matter. I don't want to be popular here. I'm pop, I want to be popular with God. I want, I want to please my Heavenly Father. I love Him. And I love His Word. So let's uh, seek His face in repentance. If we've got anything in our hearts today... We need to ask him to forgive it. I don't know your heart. I just know mine. I struggle every day. And I know my heart. But that he might forgive our sins and heal our land. Our grandchildren are depending on it, right? My great-grandchildren are depending upon it. We need to talk to God. This is going to be the closing. Unless you want to come. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to sing one verse and then give an invitation for that because I'm going to offer the opportunity for somebody who might be here. The Holy Spirit's not in your heart's door and you want to give your heart to Jesus. You want to be saved. That's fine. I don't want to close it without doing that. And then the, the, the altar prayer is going to be the benediction. Okay, go ahead. 375. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mow me and make me after thy way.
Lord just told me to do it different. I'm listening to him. He communicates to my mind. That's the way God speaks to me. I'm going to ask you people on this side to look at that prayer. I'm going to ask you folks on this side to look at that prayer. And you're not going to be on your knees. You don't have to be on your knees. That's put in there by man, not necessarily God. And being on your knees is a good way. But you can stand and pray. I've done that a lot. And I'm going to ask you guys to pray that prayer right there. And I'm going to ask you guys to pray that prayer right here. And I'm going to pray. Okay. And I want you to bow your heads. And I want you to close your eyes. You know what it says. To seek God in humility to seek his face in repentance that he might forgive our sins and heal our land. I want you to pray that prayer right now. Would you do that while we pray? Nobody looking. I, I, nobody looking. Close your eyes and, and I want us to pray that prayer right now. 